All right, everyone, get it over with. NPR Space Has Air. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another Ranger Rand episode, of course, of Archer 9234. Today, I'll be discussing Power Rangers Lost Galaxy, episode 18, titled The Rescue Mission. Now, in my previous episode, I, I said that I liked um, the outtakes and the previews from Time Force, but I never liked how um, In Space and Lost Galaxy abused the recaps. Nearly the majority of the episodes, in, in, mainly in space, they constantly had the uh, previous recaps of episodes and they constantly abused it. It was too much. I understand that they want to, you know, capture new people to watch the series, but recapping every single episode nearly, it was very annoying. The rescue mission, of course, is on the 18th episode of Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. This episode is specifically made for American fans. This does not use any footage whatsoever, nor monsters in any kind of design from Gang of Man at all. The episode begins where um, Terra Venture unfortunately hears a distress signal from uh, an alien vessel, which kind of also brings up another weird issue how um, human beings... I understand that Lost Galaxy is, takes place into a somewhat of a distant future, but it can't be that far off because the space rangers are not really old at all. So it always kind of confused, confused me where in Terra Venture where they were okay to see aliens in space, but then when Time Force came around, everyone had a high trip because he was an alien. It kind of doesn't line up with each other. So while the distress call is going off, everyone's like concerned. It's like, oh, well, we have to see what we can do for these people. And, and uh, Mike walks in and is like, he's probably already thinking of like what he could do. And the commander's trying to think of what has to go on. This is really unique for a PR episode. This episode really has never happened from and since this episode is very unique and in a much more mature tone. This episode almost felt like an episode of Star Trek more rather than a Power Ranger episode. We're dealing with pe rescuing people, we're seeing endangered lives and all sorts of things. So while Commander Stanton and Mike uh, enter the, um, command, uh, the command room where they discuss uh, their actions and what they should do and what they should not do, um, Mike has to convince the, um, I assume the committee, the command committee, uh, of why they need the rescue because again, just because your duty is to just get, bring Terra Venture to a, find a new planet for the colony doesn't mean you're, you're not supposed to rescue someone. And Mike foreshadows what the events happen at the end of the Ghost Galaxy season, ironically. So after Mike convinces the committee that they should do the rescue operation, Commander Stanton uh, promotes him to uh, team leader and he has to assemble the team. Now Mike goes and, and um, recruits Leo, which is having fun inside the um, city dome, having fun with kids. I mean, it, it's alright that Leo was chosen because obviously he's the Red Ranger, he can handle himself, he, you know, he understands how to deal with weapons and body armor and stuff. The problem I see though with this episode is that Back in the, the first two episodes of Lost Galaxy, they had, a, uh, they had a major problem with Leo being inside the um, Starship Trooper suits. Because uh, he was, mainly because he was a stowaway, but also he's a civilian, he's not trained by GSA, and he was not allowed to be there. Because he's not part of their, their, um, their, their company. So it was weird that um, Mike was allowed to enroll Leo into the rescue mission when he's not part of GSA, he's a stowaway for one thing, even though they cleared that up, but he's also mainly a civilian. I'm surprised Commander Stanton didn't say no, he's not allowed. Of course, this had to be kind of overlooked because, again, you have to have uh, Leo in the episode. So after everyone uh, boards the, the spaceship and is heading toward the, thing, uh, toward the um, damaged spaceship uh, with the aliens that were in, in distress, Leo, Mike, and all of the uh, Special Rescue Mission crew are preparing their weapons and uh, getting ready to board the vessel. This does not fit inside the PR universe. I mean, they're, it's a rescue mission, they're checking their weapons, they're getting prepared for a fight, they're preparing for casualties. This really didn't feel like um, an episode of PR, and this also felt more like an episode of the Alien movies. I do like to comment on this episode's visual effects. I, this episode, I think, cons it consists of the, the series' best visual effects. 
Because in Space's US footage, it was always cheesy when they were shooting the mega ship and the space shots, but in this particular episode, they went all out. I mean, the majority of the special effects shots were beautiful. We're, talk we're not talking, I mean, total beautiful with like uh, quality of Star Trek, for example, but these things were beautifully detailed. We had the spaceship, we had space shots, we had Terra Venture. So, of course, after Leo and the group had finally um, boarded the ship, they enter the ship and they find that it's filled with sludge goo, spider webs, and all kinds of things. Again, feeling more like an Aliens movie rather than um, a PR episode. While Leo and Mike are going through the uh, place, they uh, come across dead bodies. Of all things, dead bodies. I'm glad they, we actually saw um, repercussions of a rescue mission because, again, PR would have normally never shown dead bodies. I'm surprised they got this through due to the S&P standards and they don't really sugarcoat it with the monster being destroyed. They actually do reference him being killed. Further along as they go through the, the place, they're finding more spider webs, more dead bodies, more unknown things going on, and eventually they reach the um, bridge of the ship. They find that the, uh, the bridge has an automated security system which had recorded the distress signal, and that's what they were hearing. Everyone, unfortunately, has been killed. We've seen countless amounts of bodies being dead. It felt really more like an Aliens movie in this way. And then uh, Leo weirdly notices a, a book connected to, um, I assume, the captain of the ship. He takes it because, really, uh, this is a dead crew. Maybe it'll give an explanation of where they, uh, what's been going on with them, what's happened. So he takes it. So while Mike and everyone are trying to like return to the ship and um, bring back at least in a report, they get ambushed by, the, I assume, the intruder that attacked the ship originally. It's a weird bug monster. It, it shoots goo, it, it has shoots, it creates spider webs, and of course, um, unfortunately, the team that Mike uh, formed was getting nervous and anxious, and everyone was slowly um, being taken away by the monster. When the monster ambushes Leo, Mike, and everyone else, they begin a, a firefight. I really think this firefight was like the best firefight PR has had ever. I think it probably had the most laser special effect shots ever. It had really great choreography with the weapons. We, they were shooting the monster. They, they were bit getting hit. I really thought this was like a really good fight, which also made it stand out even more from a regular PR episode. Unfortunately, though, the ship um, hull for some reason it was interfering with um, the, the transmission signal t to the Terra Venture and Kai lost the signal while Mike and Leo and everyone got uh, ambushed onto the ship. Kendrix uh, obviously knew about the situation and made Kai leave the command center while they uh, had to uh, go board themselves as of course the Galaxy Rangers to rescue everyone. While Leo and Mike are trying to get uh, rescue everyone from the monster, Leo unfortunately loses the book and falls out of his backpack and crashes onto the floor. The alien is after the uh, book, although it's kind of weird that the alien couldn't figure out where the book was prior to them arriving to the um, uh, to the spaceship because it, it looked like the ship was already overtaken yet the monster couldn't figure out where it was. Unfortunately though the monster had um, taken captive some of the per some of the uh, rescue personnel on his team, on Mike's team, so they had to go and figure out where they were. While, while they were trying to locate the rest of their team uh, they were going further and further into the um, lower levels of the ship and uh, they found this weird cocoon area where they found all the uh, uh, rescue team members um, inside this weird spider web cocoon or something I guess I assume, where they were going to be re uh, later be served for food I guess. Mike and Leo get everyone out obviously they're all being rushed out. Leo fortunately finds the um, weird book so he grabs it and of course this triggers the monster again to attack them. So while Mike and Leo are trying to give the, uh, the rescue teams time to get away, they fight off the uh, monster. Now this is where I, I kind of get a little annoyed at this episode though is because the rescue team and everyone were finally away from them. Leo and Mike could have morphed. There was no reason why they could not morph. I mean, there's no one watching them. Everyone's away. They're just fighting the monster. They could morph. There's nothing, unless they didn't bring their morphers for whatever reason, they should have morphed and fought the monster. I mean, they could have still did what they were supposed to do in the episode without being compromised by having their powers with them. The only thing that they had to worry about is people, you know, figuring out their secret identity, but it probably it wouldn't have been an issue. They should have been morphed. Luckily enough, when the um, 
rescue the other rescue team personnel finally get back to the upper level of the ship. The other Galaxy Rangers uh, board the ship and protect them while they're going um, uh, while they're getting prepared to get board back on board the uh, space shuttle. Kai goes after uh, Mike and Leo while they're trying to find him, and they get separated while everyone else boards the sh main shuttle and gets off the ship. So then Mike and Leo finally get out of the monster's lair, I assume, and go return to the top of the ship. They unfortunately missed the space ride and had a blast open the door. Since they didn't know that the ship had already undocked, the door opened up and we get into the main issue where everyone constantly complains about. Why aren't they suffocating? Why isn't Mike and Leo dying because they have the door open? Okay, in PR universe, they specifically set up that in the PR universe, we can breathe air in space. It's been set up many several times in Lost Galaxy, primarily, and then it simply follows suit in Forever Red, for example, while everyone is breathing perfectly fine on um, the moon. That's the reason why Mike and Leo weren't getting killed when they were being sucked through the door. So after a while, the uh, space shuttle actually returns and sees that Leo and Mike are at the escape hatch and try to get them uh, back into the ship. Leo goes first, jumps in, he gets in there, he's safe and sound, perfectly great. Then, all, then Mike tries to jump and the monster grabs his leg and Leo is holding by his arm so he's being, trying, he's being torn between the ship and the, and the monster while the spaceship is being blown up. Because they, uh, unfortunately, while they were having the uh, laser fight inside, I assume the engineering room, they started the, the the place started to blow up. Again, we're dealing with the issue back in the pilot where Mike is again trying to sacrifice himself, and Leo this time is like, "No, you're coming with us. I'm not losing you again." And the monster really wants the book. We don't know why at this point. We don't know anything about the book at this point in this episode. So luckily enough, Mike finally breaks free of the monster's grip and they get Mike into the uh, space shuttle and they return to Terra Venture just in time as the space shuttle explodes. Luckily rescuing everyone on the, sh on the uh, rescue team. Unfortunately, no one survived on the space shuttle. Overall, this episode was really, really unique, really well written and very mature for a PR episode, which I mean, I'm glad because we don't usually get this kind of maturity in many fantasy kid shows nowadays. Uh, certain shows, like for example Ben 10, they do go on the mature side where they allow m much more um, mature stories. So overall I give the episode a 5 out of 5. I really had, Even though there's that stupid complaint with them not morphing, overall I, I can really forgive it. It was just because I just didn't want to deal with the, uh, any issues that would have come up in the storytelling, so they just skipped over it. Other than that, the episode was flawless. We had good acting, we had a great story, a unique story that doesn't have to involve any of the Super Sentai footage whatsoever. It kept uh, true with the space theme from Lost Galaxy, even though Ginga Man is not really a space theme show. So overall, I enjoyed this episode very well. It does stick out as one of the finer episodes from PR. What do you guys personally think? Did you think it was too bizarre for you because it doesn't feel like a PR episode? Did you think it was too much like a, a Star Trek or Alien movie episode? What are your thoughts on this? Again, everyone leave your comments below in, in the thread to see what, what your thoughts on the episode yourself. Again, keep suggesting episodes would you like me to review. Again, I'll get to the ones that you really want to review later on the in, in the season. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys right back here next week.